Thank you. When Susan called to invite me to come speak, I was first shocked. <laughs> me? Uh, I was honored and I am humbled to stand here in front of all of you. You who have given so much of your time and inspired so many others to give their time to help dogs in need. I think you all deserve a round of applause for yourselves. So I'll give you a tail <laughs> That's how we get around a closet at a dog event, right? <laughs> One of the things I want to do today is help you all recognize how important you are in people's lives and the lives of your volunteers. Not only are you helping dogs and changing dogs' lives, but you're changing people's lives. Rescue changed my life. And some of the ways it's changed my life is patience. I had no idea. I am certainly not known for my patience. I'm Irish. I'm from the East Coast. That's two. <laughs> I am not patient at all. But of course, with these dogs, you have to be patient, right? So I learned patience. I grew as a person because of my, my volunteer experience. Confidence. I had no idea that I knew how to take care of a dog, but I figured it out. And figuring stuff out, you know, we make our dogs figure things out because that's good for them. Well, it's good for people too. <laughs> and figuring it out really helped me. New friends, human and canine, right? I have two dogs in my life now who I absolutely love. I can't imagine life without them. Uh, friends from the rescue, from rescue events, it's really changed my life. Purpose in life, you know, and I'm sure you all feel this. You get some of those dark days where you just don't want to get out of bed, something bad happens in your life, and you remember the important work that you've done and how many dogs' lives have been changed because of you. That's purpose in life, and it really helps me to get out of bed sometimes. Um, new jobs, so Happy Tales books. Uh, I quit my job and started Happy Tales books. Uh, you know, uh, up for pups, new opportunities has been really great. And more fun, right? Dog rescue is fun, isn't it? It's hard. Yeah. It's fun. There's moments that are fun. <laughs> Little moments. There's kind of so why don't people get interested in volunteering with your rescue? Well, the number one reason is they don't know about it, right? How many people knew about rescue before you somehow ended up involved with rescue? Yeah, you don't know about it. <laughs> The shelters don't advertise it. It's not advertised on TV. How do you find out about rescue? Well, huge marketing efforts on our parts, right? Whether we're the, the pet fairs are great, you know, those get-togethers. But what we're not doing is, for example, hanging signs in coffee shops. Um, you know, maybe and maybe these are some things that Aubrey Rescue Network can work together with you guys on, but just things that advertise rescue in general. Because what's good for one of our organizations is good for all of them, right? Because not everyone wants a Beagle or a Boston or a Westie or whatever, but we can help them find another organization who can suit their needs. Uh, so the volunteer opportunities are not clear. So maybe they do find your organization, but they either don't know that they can volunteer or they don't know how to volunteer. And that's a big one. Do you have a link on your website on the nav bar that says volunteer? And then when someone clicks it, does it clearly describe what people can do to help your organization. And I really would like to challenge you to leave it a little open-ended, to be specific about, we need someone to send thank you notes, we need someone to foster, we need, be specific about those things, but also invite people. What are your special talents? Like me, I can hang from the ceiling. <laughs> How can you use me? Right? I would love it if you use me, because I love hanging from the ceiling. What's, what's that? Nothing. What? I, I think I hear something at the band table. <laughs> Man, the band table likes it when I hang from the ceiling. <laughs> so, you know, but my point is if you're an accountant, can you help with our bookkeeping? You know, if you know insurance, can you advise us? There, everybody has some things they can do that can help your organization. Uh, volunteer requirements are too cumbersome. Now, it's sometimes hard when we all know how much we put in to respect that someone may only have a half hour here and there. But we do need to respect that because if people are giving a little, at least they're giving something. And at least they're involved. And then at least they're out in the world saying, hey, I'm part of this organization. They're telling other people. So there's a lot of value there. So making sure the opportunities are manage manageable for people. Volunteer applicants don't receive timely communication. This is a big issue. And this happens with a lot of organizations and it's not your fault. If you're at the top of the pyramid and things aren't going on underneath you, it's not your fault. You're not the one who didn't return the call, but ultimately you're the one who's responsible, right, to make sure it's happening. So oversight of what's going on. I don't mean micromanaging your volunteers by this. Just checking in and saying, you know, when are you responding to these calls? Who is responding to these calls? Making sure there's a clearly de defined 
process for who is getting back to the volunteer applicants. And there's barriers, right? I hear this all the time, I'm sure you guys do too, about fostering. People say, I can't foster, it's too sad. I can't foster, I keep them all. I can't foster, I don't have time. Having educational information on there about that, like I talk with people all the time. No, you know, fostering for me, the reason I don't keep them all is because I have one dog that I really like spending time with. And when that foster goes on to a new home, I feel great because that foster found a new family, and now I can spend some time with my dog. That's one thing. Also, how egotistical to think I'm the only family that can care for this dog properly, right? And I try to remind people not to feel that way. I know you want to feel that way. Sure, of course I believe it. I'm the best dog care person in the world, right? I want to die and come back as my dog. But, you know, other people can also care for dogs properly. And uh, you have to approach it from that mindset. So anyway, just helping people who may be interested in fostering to understand that it's not really that hard to give them up. And I just tell them, just focus on the annoying things. This one pees all over my house. You know, this one I had to take to the vet 15 times. So, you know, again, taking away these barriers, because that's the biggest thing. There's barriers in front of people that are stopping them from fostering. Identify in your organization, what are those barriers? Is it that no one's getting back to people? Is it that people just don't know about you? When you're doing live events, are you putting out literature about volunteering with you? Is it prominent, right? So there's a, there's a lot of things you can do to let people know about your volunteer opportunities. Okay, so where do you find volunteers, right? Because you're like, well, you know, I've got a website. Uh, let's go ahead and click one. Donor database is a great place. Mine it, send information to your donors. They love you. Say, hey, do you have any special skills that you can help us with? Can you stand at an event for three hours? Can you? Uh, helps with bookkeeping. What What is it that you like to do that you can help us with? Uh, if you know someone that likes bookkeeping, please send them my way. <laughs> so, next one. Previous adopters are always a great place to find volunteers. Sometimes they even want to foster. They've adopted one, now they'd like to have three in their home, you know? Um, they, they also will tell their friends about the great experience they had with you and want to encourage their friends to get involved. Next. Current volunteers great source too, right? So the point of this is utilize what you already have. Reach out to what you already have. How can you, how can you use what you already have to find new volunteers? You can, you can, and I bet even the best of you haven't fully exhausted your databases. So, and again, when you reach out to these people, make the opportunities clear. So there's a few websites that I'm actually just learning about. One is volunteermatch.org. That's a place where you can list your volunteer opportunities. Here's the thing, folks. Even if you don't think you might get a volunteer from these databases, it is great to list your organizations wherever you can because who knows, maybe someone on there doesn't want to volunteer with you, but they want to adopt. Or just by listing, they find out there are dog rescues, and then they go and find a dog from another rescue. They don't go to a pet store. That's uh, local faith-based and community organizations are great places to find volunteers. I recently spoke at an optimist club. Those guys are great. They're optimistic. <laughs> no, they're great. And, you know, one thing that came up that I don't have an answer for, I don't have children. I'm afraid of children. Maybe someday I'll foster a child and that will change. <laughs> but uh, right now, don't know what to do with them. Luckily, this woman, Frances, came to us with her book, and it's great. I, I wouldn't have known how to write it. Uh, anyway. The Optimist Club was asking me about volunteer opportunities for children, and I didn't have an answer. If you can create in your organization any volunteer opportunities for children, whether that's to participate in a car wash to raise money or whatever, advertise those opportunities because parents want to get their children involved in volunteer uh, opportunities. This is really neat. I just found out about this. You might want to write this website down. It's app. Beextra.org, B-E-E-X-T-R-A. B -E -E -X -T -R -A. It's called The Extraordinaries. Has anyone ever heard of this? It's new to me too. These are people who have like a half hour of their time to give in technology. Who needs help with technology? <laughs> so uh, you can go onto this website and post what you have. You know, maybe you just need a website update or you've got a, uh, you'd like someone to put out a press release for you or something. Uh, these guys can help. They're looking for those kind of opportunities to pitch in with. So uh, I thought that was really neat. So give it a try. Craigslist, list in the pets section. Two reasons. You might find someone who wants to volunteer. You're raising, you're raising awareness about rescue. And you might find someone who wants to adopt from you. 
So Craigslist is good, not good to list dogs, right, for people who are just trying to get rid of their dogs, but it is good for some reasons. And local corporations, a lot of corporations have matching programs where uh, either you get some extra time off for volunteering or if they help fundraise for you, they might match. So looking into corporations that are nearby your area is definitely a worthwhile place to look for volunteers.